folders to a brand new video now. This video is all about figuring out how to shape. I have done videos like this in the past, I'm going to keep doing them for different models so you can get the understanding of how to shape. This is mostly from crease patterns uh, because diagrams give instructions on how to do it. Uh, crease patterns do not because they are considerably more difficult compared to uh, shaping from a diagram. So here we have a base that I did recently. It is the No Eat Sea Bream by Igarashi Tomosuke. Um, and I am basically going to break down the shaping for you, um, the process that helps me shape, uh, helps me get the results that I want to get, and then basically go from there. Um, because crease, uh, shaping from crease patterns is a difficult thing. Most of the time, the base of the crease pattern will not look like the finished model. You'll have a base here that has 10 flaps, but the model has six wings and four legs and you need to figure out which flap is for what and what to do with each flap and this applies to every single model out there not just insects not just animals not just objects um, you need to plan it out um, and it makes it so much easier to shape and that's what i'm going to do with you with this base um, so i wanted i collapsed this a few weeks ago i wanted to film this before I shape and go ahead because it's good to give a little insight on what I do. Hopefully you can learn as well and take notes. But I'm basically going to break down every part of the shaping, all the parts that I know, all the parts that I don't know, how to figure them out and then we'll go from there. So now I'm going to put two pictures on the screen at all times, and probably the top two corners. You'll have this one here which is a picture of the designers, the designers fold and this one here which is the designers fold but the face so I mean you get the full body on the first one and then the face on this one and I'll just keep that by my side so I can see it as well. To break down each part of the model what I like to do is either have a picture of the designer's fold, someone else's fold, find a really good fold, a really detailed, not so much detailed but good quality picture um, so I can make out everything and then it helps to visualise what they've done for each part. Secondly, um, for this instance I have drawn each part, I've drawn uh, both pictures, picture number one and then picture number two and um, I've visualised each different individual parts and then I'm going to basically use this as a checklist because when I collapse a base I will never shape the model right away that's a big mistake because if you want to try and up your shaping game if you want to try and be a bit more experimental a bit more creativity and it's good to plan things out I'm not just going to I've collapsed this five minutes ago Where's my glue? I'm going to start gluing all these flaps and these pleats. You're making a huge mistake, and I see so many people do it. And I really want to get into uh, making it much more enjoyable process um, because you've put a lot of love and passion and time into a model. You've collapsed it, you've pre creased it, you've done everything, you've got the perfect base, and you want to get the perfect results. But if you're just going to shape right away when you're not too sure on all of these individual parts, how to, how to make them appear, then you're going to make a big mistake, it's not going to look good and you're going to need to probably redo it all again. And if it's a model like this, I don't want to do it again because it took forever and I've only got one sheet of this paper and it's Ogami, it's custom, so I don't want to go through the whole process of doing it all again. So I'm going to save myself the hassle and the time and plan out each individual part. Then when I'm comfortable that I've ticked off all the parts, I know how to do the back fin, I know how to do the eyes, the little fin here. If I've ticked it all off, I'm good to go and then I will start gluing and shaping and finalising everything, putting it all together. So that is what I'm going to do um, 
for this model. I will do it for other models like insects. And I've got, I've got, I'm basically going to do this for all the models. I will upload the video collapsing it. I will do a video breaking down the shaping and then mostly a quick video showing the final result. So that is basically the little intro for these new updated series. I can get more videos out of one model, make it more and instructive, more learning. Now, basically I have drawn the full fish from the side and then the front. Now I'm basically going to go through the process of figuring out how to make each part. So I think I will start off with the eye. Now if we look at the base here and then the pictures as well. The eye appears somewhere here. Or anywhere but here, you can probably put the eye anywhere you want but it appears somewhere here so it's a matter of what can I use to make an eye. Now there's going to be an eye on both sides, it's going to be weird that a fish just has one eye any consideration, even though you only see from one angle, there will be two. There will be two eyes. So if I'm looking at this, and I'm going, I need a flap for both sides. This could be the eye, because we because we have two of these. Oh, thank you, I'm a This could be the eye. This could be the eye, okay. Could this be the eye? I mean, I could fold it up and use it for an eye. That could work. But then again, if I did it for this side, I don't have one for this side, so that's not going to work. And um, I do have this flap, but how am I going to get this flap? over here, doesn't really make any sense, and this would make more sense to use it for this little thin part right here, so what would this part be used for? It can't be used to make the little spikes at the top, and there's not enough of it. Plus that comes from the inside of the body. So there's no way I can fold this on the inside to bring it out. It's going to look not right. So this must be the eye. And then the question of, once you have figured out this is the eye, how can I make it an eye? Now I'm not going to do it on this. I've got a little test fold here. Another great little trick is to print off a part of the crease pattern. Play around with it, see all these creases that I've done, see how messy it looks, but now I know what to do. I know the exact creases to make in order to get the eye where I want it to be. So we would fold it over, tuck it under, and then the angles that you do this can be different because we have. A little point here where the edge meets. Um, I'm going to keep it like that. So it's just a matter of wherever this part is on your paper, change it. I can bring it up more, I can bring it down more, I can angle it. So I'll just say it's like that. And then I'll fold this up. Then when I fold this up, I can of course adjust the angle as much as I want. And then just say I'm happy with it here, then I can essentially fold it down or do whatever I want to make an eye because the eye on the designer's fold looked to be colour changed. So it's just a matter of I have the position, I have the correct length of flap, now, what can I do with this flap to turn it into an eye of some sort that's colour changed or how to make it look like it? So that is 
the process and I haven't figured it out yet but I will figure it out on my actual fault. So I'm very comfortable with creating a nice eye. So what I'm going to do is then I'm just going to, oh that's not a pencil, I'm just going to tick the eye and then basically the upper lip. Yeah, I'll, I'll even circle that as well. So I am comfortable that I know what to do for the eye and the upper lip. Now next, what we're going to work on, what I'm going to think of doing is making the side part for the fin. So this part right here. And my plan was, because we have this overlap, and then it's this part goes over the fins, we have this whole section as essentially the overlap. But I want to try and bring it down more. So my plan was just to fold this in and then use that to root fold behind of the excess paper as much as possible, uh, as neat as possible and as flat as possible. I'm not going to crease it but I'll show you just like that. So I fold all, all that behind. Once that's all in, I will then fold up the excess paper like that. And then that leaves this excess or these pleats for the bottom thing. So that to me is very fluid, it's very comfortable and it will work once I make it all nice and neat and precise and because I'll fold this paper behind and I can even fold in maybe even just at an angle like that because we have this nice curve and then if we take away these flaps and this whole thing like that, I have a nice curve. So I'm comfortable with that and then that leaves these pleat part, the little part of the fin. Again, you can even just leave it like that, but the designer has a little overlap. So what I'm thinking is, I could pull apart these pleats, use the excess paper, to make it a bit more wavy and then just basically fold it up and then back down and then that gives me the result that I'm looking for and to me that is that's good enough to go so I'm going to tick I'm fine with the bottom jaw and I'm fine with this side thing and then again this will have uh, one on the other side as well. So let's read this back together. And then after doing that, I would focus on a little side fin here. Now because it's like essentially on the bottom part of the jaw, this other part here, of the other blows number one two, like that, number one is just the layer, number two is the layer, but so far, um, so number one, I just had to double check, now what it is, layers number one and two, two being on top of number one, so when we have the eye here, Then we have so essentially, yeah. So this crease is wherever the edge 
of where you make the eye lines up. Now because we have this little zoom in, this gap right here is not lined up, so whatever distance this is, we just need to separate the layers. So once you've got the eye nice and formed, I'm going to pull it down ever so slightly and keep it tucked in and you can lift it up and then fold it behind this part. And then I can tuck it behind here. Which makes the side fin comfortable with that. I'm going to tick it off. Now of course to get that little change of angle Layers, you just need to play about with shaping it. Then it makes a curve. Again, you have layers on the inside, and you can go out and adjust. So I won't be able to figure that out fully until I've got all of this in place. So I'm going to put a little question mark here. I'll circle that. Also, take the eye. So I'm very comfortable with that, other than that little slight angle, but again you do not need to shape exactly to how the designer does it. Next, a little thing to also note is the orientation of the pleats, and um, which where they're going, and they're going from left to right, so the overlap is going towards the right. And this is where all the shadows are. This way. So again, comfortable with that. It's also good to do that to find the right orientation. You might make, you might think it's the other way, but once you have it in place, it makes it makes more sense. Now, as we see from the top of the eye, this layer here. This edge right here has this edge. It's this edge right here. Now it's just a matter of because we have this little distance here with the four pleats, that would be once you've done all this, just figuring out to do that you would most likely what I'm thinking of is just pull on these layers out it gives me excess paper which I can then use to curve down at an angle and then uh, neaten this up bring the edge on top of one another and then give it a nice angle so I'm comfortable with that that seems that's going to work for me. Now, we also have a little flap here. And this would most likely be around here somewhere. Now there's a few things, there's probably two things that you can do for this. Again, I'm not fully jumped into the shaping, so there could be more, but we when we make the curved folds to change the shape because we have this nice curve coming down what it is now is it's, it's going straight across and then essentially where this mountain fold is I'll just draw it down like that so we need to get rid of all this excess paper and essentially we would just Decide where we want to start the curve and then just mount fold it all the way around. And then, most likely, here you would use the excess paper to create a plate. It'd be the same on the underside, so we would curve it and then 
then try to form a little pleat here, which we can then separate the excess paper and then use it for the fin. And in doing so, this part could get pleated and left underneath, or probably easier, when you open up, we have this excess paper tucked underneath. So you could use this point, it would be quite tricky to bring it out over. No, I don't think that, I don't think that would work. There's not enough reach to come right around. But again, it could work if this is the whole part of shaping. Again, another one is when we make these nice curves, we could just bring a bit out like that. Or, yeah, that does seem to be the better option. I was thinking maybe use this part, but it doesn't seem to be much distance. It could be because it'll probably start here because we're going to curve it up, get rid of all this excess paper here and here, and then cover it. So it could, it could come from here. So I'll put this as a little question mark. And I think for this part, the back fin is simply straightforward. Once we have all the sides curved in, we just use the excess paper to spread it all out. So I'm comfortable with that. Now next, the teeth. So we have colour change teeth. Also the pictures I'm assuming to show you as well. And most likely as this part. And it would be a matter of now it does start from the bottom part here, this edge right here would be the bottom of this edge. So wherever your edge ends you Whenever you're making the eye, you can make it at a slight angle, you can bring this down, you can bring it up, just whatever you feel like. Um, so the teeth are below it. So I would, now it's hard to tell from the picture, I think the picture is like sevens or eights. So just divide this amount into seven, eight, six, whatever you want to. And then, um, and then, no, no, don't play, just overlap and then out. So like that, just for quickness sake. But you would keep it below the edge. So I'm very comfortable with that. Now the little last, setting glass part would be the little bottom jaw. It looks like on the designer's fold he has a bottom jaw overlapping the, the teeth and most likely I think it would be it must be one of these edges. This definitely doesn't get used. Maybe again it's not optional, this is just everything I'm uh, breaking down everything I see in the designer's fold and then taking what I can from there and attempting to figure it out. So it could be something here, and uh, this paper doesn't really get used. Like it's hidden here, and it's folded behind. So when it's folded behind, I don't really have any excess. What's spare? This is spare. Fold this up and over to create the bottom jaw. That could work. That could work. So if I have the teeth here, now once I'm happy, once it's like 
they're probably eights would look really nice. Even sevens, sevens would be a pain in the backside to doing this. But once I'm happy with that, bring that up over. Yeah, there's definitely enough paper here to do this, so it must be this. And then you just basically line up that angle. Wherever the, no, yeah. So the, the distance of, I would start off at the, the full distance. So what I mean is, you would fold the paper over at the height. So let me just So you would fold the excess paper over and start it at the maximum height of the teeth and then you would curve it in. You would like fold it up fold it up over and paste it over the teeth, even though these teeth go straight. Yeah, sort of like that, you're hiding the bottom part of the teeth to make it look more mouth-like, if that makes sense. So that, that makes sense to me. When I do that, fold that behind, I bring this round, I can cover it up, and then I can easily, I definitely can, enough paper to do that. And that can create the bottom jaw, and the bottom lip, and the bottom lip, the top lip, just match it out and then you've got the nice little mouth so that well, that definitely works for me I'm actually surprised that, that actually worked too because I'm not sure what else would have because we don't really have any other solutions let me see what else can we do if that didn't work now the thing is if that doesn't work you don't need to do it just because a designer has a lip doesn't mean my fault has to have a lip um, you don't have to do it whatever you see in the fold that you're using as a reference as a real picture of a real sea bream uh, you don't need to do it um, it's just whatever your take is whatever you feel like doing but I don't think anything else would work this is getting used this is getting used this is getting used we don't have do we have excess paper we can pull out? Good. Maybe let me see. If I pull that out, that's going to bring this part down. That's not going to work. And that's a bit confusing. Again, this is one of the things we are. If option A doesn't work, what's option B? Well, option A for me it does seem right. Um, I can fold it over and get that nice overlap. But I don't. But it's also good to have a plan B. What else could you do? If a plan B doesn't work, then um, just you don't need to do it. Simple as that. So I'm going to tick that as well. The bottom jaw and the teeth. And then basically the last part is the spikes. Now, the spikes come from here. So how are we going to make spikes appear? So my thinking is, I would probably do this maybe after I've folded this behind. I've folded the curves behind, I've got the nice curve, I've got the fin. Then I would do this, or maybe you would do it first. Not too sure, but what I would do is, Unsync this part, however you want. So if I unsync that, again I'll make it really neat and actually do it. Now I'm not going to unsync the full thing because it will come up. It will start here and basically end here. So instead of just making a mountain a valley fold straight across to bring the full thing up, I would do a curve. Basically, I would push this down like that, and then once I'm happy with it, 
I would separate all the pleats, make it near enough this edge as flat as possible. So what I would do is, I would, once I'm happy with that, I'll glue, but I would glue these edges together, I would fold the paper back behind, I would curve it, and then, because I know these are all secure and in place, undo all these pleats, make it completely flat, and then I can then basically make uh, dorsal swings like Rio Jean. So I, I can make them bigger than just what they, they are as the, the length of each flap. Does that make sense? So that makes complete sense to me. So it's just a matter of playing about with whatever your curve sort of for the body comes down, you would stop it there. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And I'm sure that would work. Yeah, so spread these out. Flatten it. Use all that excess pressure in the paper. It's, it's going to be really warpy. To lean out as much as possible. And then basically fold it over. And then sink it all down. Sink it in to make it even. If that would work on both sides. Yeah, so I'm happy with that. That would definitely work. So, we have went through, near enough, every part. We've broken down the model in each specific location. We've ticked off the parts that I'm comfortable with. We've questioned the parts that I'm not. And, pardon me. Now, for me, it's a decision of, am I comfortable enough to go ahead and start shaping? And most importantly, start gluing. Because once you start adding glue, there's no going back. If you have glued this flap, you can't unstick it. That is it. So you need to be confident you know what you are doing before you start gluing. Pay that right. Um, and then you go from there. So that is it everyone. That is the video. I hope you have learned something from it. That is the process that I do for every model. I'll sketch it out, figure out what's what to do, how to do it, how to get it, add more twists and then when I'm comfortable I will start shaping. So that is it everyone, thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next breakdown, I think that'll be a good title, Shaping Breakdown, Shaping Analysis. I think it's something catchy but that is it everyone, thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.